Hello and welcome to the Beyond Resilience Life podcast, a show about life adversity, how to overcome it and transform your life. This is your host, Dr. Lidiana Garcia, a licensed psychologist in Los Angeles, California. And even though my hope is to deliver information that can be helpful for you to overcome adversity and transform your life, it is not meant to be a substitute for being diagnosed and treated by a licensed mental health, medical, and related professional. Hello, hello. So before we get started, I wanted to provide you a little intro about our special guest for today. Her name is Kate Northrop. And I am currently one of the incubators. It's kind of like a mastermind that she has for this year, 2020, from all the years. So I've been under her mentorship this year, and it's a mastermind to help women with their businesses and applying the very doing less. So she's very strategic and has been helping me trying to figure out ways to, besides recognizing that I need to continue regulating a lot, to be able to strategize a lot of my business instead of keep throwing the dart. And that I think it's so important for anyone that has like has have moved into the business realm without necessarily having that much knowledge. And if you're a BIPOC and you're listening to this, a woman of color, and you come from a family that you have no idea how to do business, you have not been privileged in that area, then a lot of times it might feel that way that you just throw in that, throw in that, throw in that. And be a business, I've been able to also see the different wounds that I've had to heal. So I think it's been really helpful to know that there are ways that you can realize what are the activities that you have to do in working less to be able to produce the same or even more. And I see that as also part of my healing journey. So I'll be sharing a little bit about this in today's episode. But like I mentioned, I just want to give a little introduction about who is Kate Northrup. Kate Northrup is an entrepreneur. She's a best-selling author. Her book is Do Less. And she's a mother of two beautiful daughters. She also has a podcast that just finally finished, The Kate and Mike Show, that has a lot of great information. And she is a pioneer in this whole aspect of merging the cycle tracking with the business. It's one of those few entrepreneurs that talk about it and that integrates that in her model as a way to figure out how to work less to make more, which sounds very amazing. Something else that I want to share about her is this is more from a personal experience being under her mentorship for this last 10 months, basically, is that she maneuvers things so gracefully. She's an amazing speaker, very authentic. And right now with everything that's going on in our world, all these situations and issues and racism and the injustice, systemic oppression, she's very vocal about doing the work and like doing her own healing as a white woman and doing the work to kind of break and dismantle all the systems of oppression. So I am really proud of her and really happy that I can see that from her. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Beyond Resilience Live. I am so thrilled and super excited to have with you and introduce you to one of my mentors, one of the person that I look up to, and this year has been filled with a lot of, you know, <laughs> stuff. And I am so grateful that I was under the mentorship of Kate Northrop because I was able to see her and how gracefully she maneuvered it all. And probably she's probably like, oh my God, I'm so ready to be done. But I was able to notice how gracefully she maneuvered and it gave me like that sense of peace and being a leader during this time that we're so needed. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And without any further ado, Kate, thank you for coming with us. Oh, thank you, Lidiana. It is such an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Likewise, likewise. So today we're going to be talking about one of my current favorite topics, which is how to do less <laughs> and how that is so, so important for the healing journey. And it's something that for me, the coming in realizing 
how hard I was working and how damaging that was for my own healing journey. So I remember when I saw you speak, actually, this is close in the year. It was last yeah. year in Business by Design in October when I saw yeah. you speak. And when I saw you talking about how you were able to do that, because I was like, James, everything sounds amazing. But you're a man, one. Second, you have a lot of, you don't have kids, two. And third, I have a lot going on. So how can I do this in a way that goes along with me? And I was pregnant. I was like a month or two pregnant. So I was already like, I cannot keep working this way. I can't. Otherwise, I'm going to burn out and I'm not going to be the mom that I wanted. So that's why, you know, closing the circle that I have you now here interviewing and how important that is for the healing journey. So I already kind of discussed a little bit in the intro about you. So if you can share with us about how do you get here? How do you get into this doing less? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know it's how like a, did I get how did I get here? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So really, you know, the story is that I was pregnant with my first daughter. I now have two. And I was so tired. I have never been so tired again in my life, which is crazy because I've also, you know, had the experience of having a toddler and a newborn and an incredibly sick husband and a company to run. So, but I was more tired being pregnant <laughs> with my first. And I had never had the experience before as like an athlete. I was a dancer. I was just like, I come from people who are heavily like capability identified. Like we identify, my people identify with being capable. <laughs> and it was the first time that I just felt like I wasn't physically capable. But what was so mind blowing was that I was doing the most productive thing I had ever done in my life, which was make a human being. But like, I wasn't thinking about it and I didn't have to actually really do anything about it. It was so wild. So that happened and then I had um, a really traumatic birth with my first daughter and a pretty traumatic first year of motherhood. Honestly, she was really sick. I struggled with my mental health, postpartum insomnia primarily, postpartum anxiety, mastitis, nursing issues. She like, bleh, it just sucked. Like it just sucked. And, and yet, oh, and I also didn't think that I should need any help. So I had like 10 hours of childcare a week which may sound like a lot to some people. I understand like everything's so relative and especially during this year, like for many folks, 10 hours of childcare a week would be heaven. However, you know, running a full-time business, like that wasn't a lot. And yet a year after Penelope was born, my husband and I sat down with our accountant and we looked and realized we had made the same amount of revenue that year while not sleeping, while I was literally losing my mind and while I only had 10 hours a week of focused time, and we had made the same amount of revenue compared to previous years when I had been working like, you know, 40, 50 hours a week and having all this energy and time and whatever. And so I thought, well, then like I've had this, you know, sideways, backwards, whatever. And so that's kind of really where the do less, how I got into this. And then it was after I got my period back after Penelope was born. So she was 13 months old. I was still nursing, but my period came back. And for the first time, I was just so fascinated by it. And it turned out like starting to track that and starting to come back into my body as like my own, not, you know, a vessel for my daughter, not primarily like a nutrition vehicle <laughs> for my daughter, like coming back to it almost as though it was for the first time create, it was like a life raft. I just needed something to hang on to. And it turned out my cyclical energy as our, all of ours was really predictable. And I really needed something to rely on at that time. And it turned out it was me. So that's the story. Okay. Yeah. I remember when I came back, talking about coming back into my body. <laughs> I remember when I came back into my body after I had my son and how amazing it was to finally feel completely, you know, back. I can't wait for that to happen again. <laughs> yes, I know. And then I, you know, we don't have to talk about this right now. And I don't know what your future family planning plans are, but oh, done, it was like, done, done. you're done. Okay. So it's an amazing thing that I'll never forget the day I got my period again after Ruby, my second. And then it was like, oh, now it's for like, now it's on. Like we are back folks. 
And it was so, I actually, I have this really like witchy, hilarious friend who I was like, oh, I just got my period back. Ruby was 10 months old and happened to be on a new moon. And she, she was, this is like totally an overshare, but anyway, she was like, she, she was like, she was like, take some of the blood and like go do a ritual outside in your yard. And I was like, oh my God, my neighbors already think I'm completely <laughs> sane, but like maybe there's a corner I can go hide in and go do this. But I'll just never forget like that really, it's mm. such a beautiful experience of like being your own again. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. And for those that are probably listening go like, how do you make the same amount of money with working so much less? Do you have any idea? Like, I do. I do. Okay, okay. And it's like, it's a set of, here's, here's the thing. I just want to be really clear because I think sometimes folks are like, oh, you wrote the do less book and you do this do less planner and you're the head of origin. So you must have this completely figured out. Here's what I want you to know. <laughs> this is a set of guiding principles. That's like, I am always sort of in cyclical relationship with where I'm either really like, super on it, or I've drifted away and I need to regain my traction with. If you're a pilot, you know, I'm not a pilot, <laughs> but you know that like, you're never actually steering a hundred percent on course. You're always slightly off and just steering like back towards. And so this set of principles is that there is not a moment where I believe any of us will be like, nailed it, you know? So but here's what happened that year. And here's what we have continued to steer our course towards. Number one is really because I only had, you know, nap times sort of because Penelope was not much of a sleeper. And it was like one of those, you know, oh, you put her down and 15 minutes later, she was crying again. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> Yes, yes. So I didn't have any predictability in terms of my time other than those 10 hours a week of childcare. So, so I had that. And in that time, it was like, I had to just get focused and get it done and get done just only the things that were the highest and best use of my time. There was no time for screwing around wondering like, oh, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. Oh, should I be distracted by this person? Should I have this meeting? Should I say yes to this thing? It was like, oh no, I do not have time. I have 10 hours. So during this time, I will create my content, write my sales email, show up for my courses. Like it was just so clear. And it turns out that all that extra extraneous stuff like didn't matter. <laughs> um, so that was one, that's the 80-20, you know, identifying mm -hmm. the 20% of activities that give you 80% of the result. So that I continue to repeat and refine. And then the second thing was boundaries, which I think I just said was like, I'm trying to keep this human alive. I'm trying to keep myself slightly above water. So I don't have time for anybody's bullshit. I don't have time for like requests. I just was like, uh, basically no to everything. <laughs> um, so that turns out to be a really great strategy. <laughs> yes. And I think there was also something I will say, and this is a bit more amorphous. Um, it's not so much a strategy, but there was something about having gone through birth and becoming a mother that increased dramatically the level at which I took myself seriously. And so that really improved my point of attraction as a business owner. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that would be the case whether or not you have a business, right? Because I know your audience isn't primarily business owners, though, you know, if you have your own practice or just career wise, there is something about the confidence of owning it, whether you're walking in to ask for a raise or walking into a job interview or, you know, whatever it is. Like, I'll never forget there was a girl that I went to high school with who she got all the leading roles in all the musicals and she had a terrible voice. But there was something she had this confidence that was like she just thought she was the shit. And so she just got cast. She, she acted as though she was a star. And so then she was. And so I think there was an element of that in me becoming a mother. I just was like that mama bear energy, that feeling of like, I am not to be messed with kind of thing. Mm, I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Now moving into how working all the time is impacting our overall health. 
Mm. Can we share a little bit about that? Yes. Well, so you know more about the nervous system and the brain than I do. So maybe you can like support me with some facts. <laughs> I will, I will. <laughs> but here's what I know. When we are working, so many of us for a variety of reasons, whether it is your lineage, whether it's the messages you received growing up, whether it's the messages you received from society as a woman, as a person of color, it's whatever you got going on, right? So many of us are working from this place of trying to prove something because society has told us repeatedly that we are not good enough. We get that message all the time as women because our leadership does not represent us. And obviously it's only more intense as a person of color, right? So then we're out there building our businesses or sitting at the office and it's like, the constant message is you're not good enough. So therefore you need to put in more hours, work harder, say yes to all the things, whatever. And so we're driven essentially by proving. And when we're in that place, that actually is, I, I read this great book, which I know I've told you about Dr. Valerie Rain's book, Patriarchy Stress Disorder, realizing that overworking for many of us is actually a trauma response. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when we're in a trauma response, we do not have access to all of our brain capacity. We don't have access to our full decision-making power. We don't have access to our full creativity, to our full capability for connecting, for learning, for impact, for innovation. I mean, I'm just going to keep it really simple, right? Like if I'm trying to write a sales email, because that's some of the things that I do, and I'm like, overworked and exhausted and running a trauma response, a trauma reaction pattern, I am not going to write a good sales email and it is not going to convert well. So I'm not going to make as much money. So just a practical example. <laughs> no, but yeah, we love the practical because I think that's the part that many of us are missing. I remember in my, <laughs> cause you might ask, and I was a functional overworker. I got my PhD that way. Like sure. half of it, I was numbed and I'm like, go, 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 go. For me, it was more my body started taking over and I have, started having like autoimmune diagnosis here and there yeah, and, yeah. and kept, they kept coming. And then it was like, well, you have family history. And of course, then I'm like, yeah, my family history is because of the collective trauma and the family, <laughs> all that. But many people might go like, well, it doesn't impact me that much. And it's so hard because I feel like they're still in that. Well, I mean, they're surviving. So, and I was surviving for a while. And when you're in survival, you have to be in survival. But when you start getting out of survival and you find a way, and then that's when you can kind of like, it's not always being in that mode. And that's the hard part is like realizing when am I not there that I can start taking. And I mean, some other people might say, well, you can make it. And I'm just thinking of BIPOC people, you know, like, how with, right now we're recording this when a lot is going on in our, in our nation, right? So there is that fear of nobody has our back. Like yeah. for black women, that people don't have their back. For brown people that we're like, we might be next. At least that's what my nervous system feels. It's like, oh my God, I'm also part of that. So, so there's that part of like being hypervigilant and being aware about the reality, but also taking care of ourselves. And I think that's so, so important. Yeah. It's so, so important, Lidiana. And I'm so glad you brought that up. Obviously, I cannot speak to that directly as a white woman. And the tool of like getting to know your own body and listening to what she needs, like when we can rewrite the script and have our own back in this way of like, okay, so the world doesn't value your body at large. But what if you did? Like, how can that change things? And I know that's so much of what you teach your community. It's so beautiful, right? Thank you. Yes, yes. The other teacher that I'm thinking is Milagros Phillips and how much oh. she's teaching about that, you know, it's, yeah, the importance of, yeah. And this was one of the questions I think I'm just going to mingle in, in because I think we're right now, there's this idea of how working less, especially for BIPOC and how that could be healing. And one of the things that I really admire of you as well is that part of your employees and crew, you have women that are Black women in your team. And 
you are always talking about the causes and all that. So from that perspective or your own perspective, how would you say for that, for people that might be listening, that might be BIPOC and be like, why is it even more important at times for our healing to be working less? Yeah. I mean, this is a complicated, multi-layered question, which Mm -hmm. I am in no means the expert on. So I'll just share what I've learned with the history of race in our country, certainly, and actually the history of race around the world. In any, in any culture, it shows up. The caste system is just this illness mm-hmm. that we have as humanity that I believe we're healing from. So in the United States, you know, with a history of 400 years of dramatic racial inequality that started off with slavery, to have had a history where the labor of Black bodies wasn't valued at all, like there was no payment to, to so like the labor was free for so long and that's what built the United States of America. So to be certainly a black person and also any person of color, indigenous, Latinx, like it's such a revolutionary act to rest. <laughs> and, and there's a beautiful account, I'm sure you follow it, the Nat Ministry Yes. <laughs> which speaks to this so, so powerfully and poignantly. So yeah, that's, I guess that's all I have to say, but I mean, there's so much more that I'm sure you talk about all the time here. Yeah. And I'll be talking more this season about it because I feel like I sprinkle it, <laughs> but you guys will hear more about this because I think it's so, so important, especially with everything going on. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Yeah. So why is it important to track, now we're going to move into more uh, tangible stuff. So why is it important to track our own physical cues and energies and cycles to help us work less? Okay. So this is where I get really nerdy and excited. Okay, cool. I love that. (laughs) We are nature. Okay. We are a part of nature. Our bodies were created from the same stuff as the plants and the animals, like we are all made of the same stuff. We are made of mother earth. We are all part of that same thing. And there's this beauty in nature, despite the fact that humans have been like ravaging it for so many years, but there's this beauty and abundance and resiliency and regenerative energy in nature that is so awe-inspiring. It keeps Like that pulse, that rhythm keeps the plants alive. It keeps the ocean going. It keeps all the animals going. So imagine if we took that same framework, the framework of the seasons, this framework of the lunar cycles, the framework of the menstrual cycle that is the microcosm of those larger seasons and cycles that are going on outside of us, happening inside of us. If we follow that, we are tapping into the most abundant, resilient, regenerative framework known, I don't even want to say known to, you know, humans, just like known to at least our galaxy. Because I can't say the universe. I mean, there's a lot going on in the universe uh, that we don't know about. But like, like imagine the fuel of that, tapping into that resource as opposed to thinking that like somehow the best solutions for our time and energy management are in our intellect. Like the limitation of that is so profound to think that our best solution is in our mind. It's like this tiny little nothing compared to all of what's going on around us and all of what's going on inside of us. Mm, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And how do you do it? So people that are listening, like, how do I track that? You know, that sounds beautiful, but how do I do it? <laughs> so it can be very simple. And so if you are somebody who has an unmedicated, regular menstrual cycle, regular-ish, right? Healthy, then you would track your own menstrual cycle. So you can use an app, you can use a journal, you can use my do less planner. What I use, I honestly use like some combination of all of the above. <laughs> and you just track. How do you feel on day one? How do you feel on day two? How do you feel on day three? Get to know what the four phases of your cycle are. There are four phases of your menstrual cycle, not just when you're bleeding or when you're ovulating. There's two other phases. No one's told us really much about them, but they're very important. 
And so get to know that. And if you are pregnant or nursing or postmenopausal or have had a hysterectomy or are a trans woman or whatever situation you may have, then you would track with the moon. And there are a million lunar tracking apps or lunar calendars that you can get. But basically to look at how do I feel around the new moon? How do I feel around the full moon? What's my energy like? What's my sexual energy like? What's my mental energy like? What's my physical energy like? How are my emotions? And just ask yourself, it could be like a three minute journaling practice. This does not need to be complicated. I really am into simple. So anything that I advise is not going to be like super intense (laughs) or super, you know, labor intensive. And so then you'll get to know you like build this intimacy with yourself and then you get to know, oh, typically, you know, around this time of the month, I feel this way. Therefore, I can set myself up for success and support myself and have my own back in the following ways. Like I know the second half of my cycle from about day 15 to day 25, I have a relatively short cycle right now. So I usually get my period after 25 days. But I know that second, you know, that 15 to 20 day, 25, I feel kind of prickly and inward. And like, I don't really feel like responding to social media comments. I might post less often. I'm just like less out there. Now, if I didn't know this information and I was trying to run my life according to the Instagram algorithm, I would judge myself and push myself to be different and find myself wrong, which wastes a lot of time and energy instead of just being like, okay, well, half of the month you know, until I hire a social media manager half of the month, I'm just like not feeding the algorithm. And I'm good with that because instead I am listening to my body. Mm, Yes. Listening to our bodies. I think that's part of the overall goal. Well, tracking is basically just listening to our bodies and going with our cycles and our bodies. Totally. And I think, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. You I think when people say, listen to your body, like that can feel really, especially if you were not raised in a family where listening to your body was a thing, that can feel like, I don't, I don't know what that means. What are you talking about? And so cyclical tracking gives us an inroad. It's like, okay, listen to your body in this way with this data tracking. And for those of us who are more intellectually identified, right? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like that can be a really great inroad because it's sort of more under the umbrella of data collection. So it's like, okay, I can do that because it gives your mind something to chew on. Yeah. And it's something that I usually start now with all my clients or because I love that we, you know, we start bottom. I feel like the most important regulation is bottom up. There's also the top down, but the bottom up, it's so important. But if you cannot recognize the sensations in your body and what's going on in your body, then you're not going to be able to implement any coping skill necessarily. You'll be just throwing darts out there which can kind of like also again for business, it can feel that way when you're throwing darts out there, like randomly, as opposed to be like what, yeah. And that I feel is something that happens to a lot of BIPOC women or BIPOC in general. And perhaps it could be related again to not feeling, if you're dysregulated, if you're like still in your trauma response kind of mode, then you're like just throwing darts everywhere. Yeah, because from that place, there's a frazzled kind of energy where we do get, and again, you could speak more to what happens in the brain, but I know that we get a myopia myopia, Mm -hmm. uh, in a trauma response where we actually just can't see the full picture. And so it will absolutely be like, I'm just trying this thing and I'm trying this thing, but either lacking follow through or lacking a good plan or lacking an overall strategy, right? Because traumatized state is just scrambling. And so that, that ability to learn to regulate yourself, which you teach so beautifully, and then come into a coherent state where you can slow down and make a beautiful plan that actually makes sense is such a gift. It's a gift of the slowing down. Yes. Yes. Hmm. So coming almost like we're coming close to the end of the episode, but I want to to for you to speak a little bit about you kind of already mentioned some but if you can summarize it like three to five overall tips on how to start this doing less journey Mm -hmm. and then to talk about your amazing offering okay great so number one i would say start to track your cyclical energy 
Now you could track it in concert with your menstrual cycle. You could track it in concert with the moon or neither. I have some people who are like, yeah, I don't find that I'm having predictable energy ebbs and flows in alignment with either of those things. I'm doing this on my own thing over here. Great. That's wonderful. <laughs> um, you just need to know, right? Because the lie that we've been told by patriarchy is that women are unpredictable. And that is a disability of ours or a, I can't think of the word I'm looking for right now. But anyway, so that's a lie. We're actually incredibly predictable just in a cyclical way. And people who are estrogen dominant cycle every 28-ish days hormonally in a predictable way, whereas people who are testosterone dominant cycle every 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So our whole world, of course, has been set up for testosterone dominant people, which is obviously we know that. Yeah. So that's one thing is your cyclical tracking. Number two is identify the 20% of activities that get you 80% of your results. You could do this in any category of your life. It could be in your marriage. It could be in your parenting. It could be in your spiritual practice. It could be in your career for sure, in your business and any micro area. What I love is like everything's micro and macro, right? So it could be like, okay, during this particular promotion, what got, what was the 20% that got me 80% of the results? Or during my overall calendar year, what was the 20% that got me 80%? So you can do it in all different kinds of ways, but any area that you're trying to tweak, I would definitely say that. Number three would be really get clear on what you are no longer available for. So those would be your boundaries, boundaries with self, boundaries with loved ones, boundaries with the media, both social and mainstream just really getting clear on like what you are not available for and what you are available for. So what are you a no for and what are you a yes for? I really recommend having some of that spelled out ahead of time so that when requests come in, you don't have to think about each one individually, which is actually a waste of time. As an example, in our company, you know, we just have like a standard, like I just, everything that's in this one category is a no. Everything that's in this category is like, maybe it's a yes if it falls in if it like meets these criteria like that. So it just makes it so much easier to know it, we're not evaluating every single thing. So have some blanket policies for yourself. I love calling them policies because it's easier for me to respond and be like, oh, I have a policy that I don't do that. So it just feels like I'm not saying no. The policy is saying no. <laughs> I made the policy. Yes, yes. It just feels easier. So I recommend having some good policies in place. Um, and I have policies, you know, in mothering, for example, like I won't spend more than four nights away from my kids. That's just a policy. So that's really helpful, you know, to say yes or no to things or whatever. Of course, right now I'm not spending any time away from my kids, but. <laughs> <laughs> so right now maybe the policy needs to be adjusted, right? <laughs> they need to be. That was yeah. my pre-COVID policy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I love this idea because then it makes it very clear. And we're talking about boundaries, which is another big subject in terms of healing as well. So, so thank you. And what are you like, well, right now we're, it's Wednesday and you just opened the card to an amazing yes. offer. So what are you having for us that you can share a little bit? Yes. So for those who are like, this sounds amazing, but the rest of the world is doing it a different way. And I feel like I need, like I need support. I need tools. I need community. If you're running a business and you feel isolated, if you are running a business and you're overworking, especially in relation to the amount of revenue you're making, and you just feel like there should be more to show for the amount of effort you're putting in, my membership origin is open for a limited time. We usually open the doors publicly once, maybe twice a year. And this is a membership all around growing your business while doing less. So we have an incredible community to share resources, to do business together, to share support, accountability and then monthly themed topics with a how-to lesson, and then a Maven masterclass with an expert, and then group coaching around that particular topic that has to do with growing your business while doing less. And in the month of October, it's about creating and selling your digital course in a do less way. Mm, so important, especially right now, a lot of people are just creating courses and they're going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And there, there are right ways to do it and sort of like less effective ways to do it. Yeah. I love being part of Origin. There's so much that I'll be sharing after we record this. So keep listening until the end that I'll be sharing about it. But 
Thank you so much, Kate, for joining us. Thank you for all the wisdoms and for the information and for being one of the brave people, women, to talk about the importance of listening to our bodies that we're not. I love when you said that quote, which, you know, how this whole that women are unpredictable. And then I even think about the image that they have about Latina being way more unpredictable, you know, how in the telenovela and everything. Yeah. But, you know, to, yeah. So to bring back that and to be like, we're not, it's just being a story and we're being manipulated in that story. And there's ways that you can work according and liberating and this healing. So thank you so much for joining us. And any last thank minute you. thought or anything? I think the final thought would be your worth is not determined by what you do. That's the final affirmation. So thank you so much you. for having me. Thank you. I just appreciate you so much. And I'm really just proud of all the beautiful work you've done this year. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye. I'll be sharing some of the resources here and we'll be back in next week. Thank you. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining this amazing episode. Over here in the show notes, you'll be able to find the link for if you're interested in learning more about Origin, the membership that opens today and will be open until next week. So for a very short period of time. So if you're very interested in it, go and do it as soon as you can, because, you know, next week she'll be closing the card for most likely until next year around this time. So if you are interested in it, if you have any questions, you can also send me an email about it. I am an affiliate. And what that means is, so that's a disclaimer, <laughs> I'm an affiliate. So what that means is that any profit that comes from the link that I will offer in here in the show notes or via my emails, then I'll be getting a commission about it. So I just want to be very upfront about it. Why am I an affiliate? Besides, obviously, you might be like, well, <laughs> you know, you want to make money and all that. But Besides that, it's not just making money, is the part that I I was offered the opportunity to be an affiliate. So that's one. The second is it's a program that I truly love. I love her mentorship. I feel now lately as a BIPOC entrepreneur that I've been way more vigilant about who I follow, who I don't, who I give my money to because of everything that's going on. There's been a lot of spiritual bypassing and all that. And so far, you know, Kate has been on point on that. She's been very straightforward on how she supports our community. She's been very outspoken and she's using her privilege to talk about dismantling all these kind of things. And I am very passionate about the doing less work, especially how revolutionary and healing it can be for us. So I feel like it's a combination of how do you learn to do your own business and function that and also have that liberation of not going again down the rabbit hole into another burning out and just keep repeating patterns of trauma and of adversity that will not get you to a place that you will feel fulfilled, if that makes sense. So that's why I am an affiliate and I am a happy affiliate. I'm a proud affiliate. So with that, I am offering some bonuses if you join via my link and I'll be sharing some of them and you can see more information when you go to the link. But there are two options of joining Origin. One of them is monthly payment plan or yearly payment plan. So first, I'm going to say the bonuses for the monthly payment plan. So there will be three different bonuses. Number one, I'll be conducting uh, how I delegate and I optimize my content masterclass. And that's going to be approximately a two hour masterclass. And you'll be able to see the dates through the link and all that. But in general, in that class, I will teach you how I create and repurpose content, how I delegate my work. And I have three virtual assistants. And you will also learn how to repurpose your, if you have a podcast or if you're creating content, you can repurpose your content. And I'll discuss in that class how I do it in terms of Transform it into blogs, ebooks, audiograms, infographics. I'm also going to share how I hired my three virtual assistants and the systems and processes I use to communicate with them and to delegate work. 
and also to like determine what I delegate, what I keep. I will also be offering a Q&A session at the end so you can ask me any question. It will be a live masterclass, but it will also be recorded for those that cannot attend in like live. So that's one of the bonuses for the monthly plan. The second bonus is I'm going to give you all my five guided meditations that I created for the Healing Village. It includes number one, a guided future self meditation. Number two, a future visioning meditation. Number three, how to use the 54321 mindfulness meditation. Number four, exploring the five senses meditation. And number five, a resourcing guided meditation. So all of these are going to help you not only to kind of like use that notion of the future self to kind of create and visualize what you want, but also how to do it in a way that you can feel calmer and more regulated. Because if you listen to this episode, you know how we talk about when we're not regulated, we're just like all over, scatter all over the place. So, And lastly is the third bonus will be a Trello board. And for those of you that have no idea, Trello is a system that it's kind of, I don't even know what it would stand for, but it's kind of like how you organize the information and you can create a board. Like it has like a checklist of all the different tasks on how I create this podcast. So I will share with you all the little steps and some extra little things that I'm going to provide you. And those are the three bonuses for the monthly plan. If you decide that you want to save money and kind of like you love her content and you want to go to the yearly plan, then the bonuses will include the same one that I just discussed. So the three ones and this two extra. One would be another Trello board on how I launched my course and it would have all the tasks. So that way it will be easier if you decide down the road to launch a course, then you can kind of see all the different tasks that you have to do. And then you can decide what you want to delegate, what do you want to do? And I mean, those are the ones that I use. That's I mean that you have to use it, but it's helpful to see everything that you have to do in so that way you can plan ahead and you can create that. And number two, I will also be giving a one-on-one strategy, 15 minute call that could be about anything in terms of business that I can help you with, or it could also be about regulation and how to help implement and coping skills. So you can start kind of like, instead of throwing darts everywhere, you can throw it more specifically into a clear plan. So those are the five bonuses that you'll get for the yearly. Let me summarize them again. So for the yearly plan, you're going to get the masterclass on how I delegate and optimize creating content, the live one. Number two, you're going to get the five guided meditations. Number three, you're going to get the how I create a podcast task Trello board. Number four, launching a course task Trello board. And number five, a one-on-one strategy 50, five zero <laughs> minute call with you. So those are the five bonuses that you will get with the yearly plan. And there are steps on how to let me know that you purchased and I, you know, all that stuff, but you can go to the link and you can see how to purchase, how to claim these bonuses, whether you chose to go to the monthly or to the yearly plan. If you have any questions, you can send an email info at the beyond resilience life. I am so looking forward to hear from you. If this resonates with you or also about how You can start thinking about doing less. Maybe this is something revolutionary in your mind and how you can actually start doing that in your own life, not only in your business, but also in your parenting, in your household, and in many other places. Looking forward to hear from some of you. Lastly, a reminder about our Mighty Network community. If you haven't joined yet, you can also find that link here. And it's basically a space where I'll be sharing and and kind of building more a community because I feel like right now we're in need of that. And it's a group outside of Facebook. So for anyone that has seen the social dilemma or any like that, but it's a group outside of Facebook, outside of the noise of Facebook. So and then you can choose to participate as much as you want. So when you join, you'll have to download the app and all that. But then that way. You can just go straight to our group without having the noise of seeing all the other notifications of your family, your friends and all that, you know, that happens when you go to Facebook. So 
thank you again. Looking forward for our next episode and take care. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Beyond Resilience Life podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. If you like this episode, please make sure to review it and comment on it and share it with your friends and family. Until next time.